satisfaction level with your painting at this point. And then, some of you might have the answer pretty quick in your head, but some of you might feel like, hmm, okay, I haven't really thought about that. Do I love my painting? Or do I really not like it? If I really don't like it, why? Or if I really love it, why? So there's lots of different ways of approaching creativity and it's not specific to who you are necessarily. Sometimes it's just specific to the actual painting that you're doing or, um, or, or any other creative project that you're, that you're approaching. And I kind of see it in, in, in two, two different ways, but I, I'm sure there's just many, many more that I'm not thinking of. But one way to approach a creative project is you've come to some kind of vision about what you'd like to manifest. There's, there's a desire that um, really is drawing you in. And it might have come from a special experience that you had somewhere. And so you really want to bring, you want to draw attention to that. It might come from, a, you know, a, a, a person you want to do their portrait because that inspired you. You know, the, the list is endless. But you come at it from this idea or this inspiration to manifest something specific. Then there's another way to do it, and that is you really just want to play with the energy of creativity, that you just want to muck about with paint, you want to play with color, you want, you want to just clear away all your original ideas or all, all clear away any preconceived notions, let's say, and just open up and have all your paint and your brushes and your canvas in front of you and see what happens. That's a very open way of approaching creativity because you're acknowledging that you are actually, you know, a channel. You're like that empty flute waiting for the waiting for the breath to make the music and so i th i think what what i'm seeing with just having the privilege of being your teacher here and getting to know you as individuals through your creativity is that there seems to be kind of those two orientations one the very the vision, I came with the picture, this is what I want to do, I want to paint my dog, I want to paint the frog rock, I want to paint, you know, a specific idea. And then there are other people that are just trusting that their idea of, well, their, 
urge to create is going to move them. And it's mysterious. And they have no idea how it's going to work out. And they come what may. And they're both equally as valid. Personally, I do it from both places. I, I come at it with a very specific idea of what I want to paint because it inspired me. Or I come from a place, Dwayne and I often paint together, where the whole idea is trash all your original ideas and visions and just open up. That's your vision. Just open up and be clear. You never know what's going to come through. Eventually, though, what happens is as you start the process and you actually get, you know, get your paintbrushes dirty, start mucking about with color, you start to get messages, clues about what feels good to you, what's nourishing you. It's like, okay, I'm opening up that conduit. Remember I talked about that ocean of creativity and opening up that conduit. It's coming through. And the way you know that is you get very clear messages like, ooh, this does not work for me. Or, oh yeah, I really like how those colors work together. Or I really like those shapes. What I often do when I'm walking around and giving you feedback is I want to tell you what really, what I think really works on your painting. Just in case you might have forgot, you know, overlooked that clue. It was a clue to me. I have to, I have to always say, you know, this is your painting, this is your process, and it really, I'm only here to help you see the clues, but those are clues I'm getting on your painting. So it's really secondhand. The most valuable clues you're going to get are your own, of course, of course, of course. So this is your process. So if you really love your painting and you really like what's happening with it, tell your painting, I really like you, I really like you. This is. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. This is get charging me up. I'm feeling really good about painting this painting. And acknowledge it. There's nothing ego about that. That you're just coming from this place of acknowledgement that you are getting that energy coming in through that conduit, that umbilicus to the ocean of creativity. And I think it really, you know, it does need to be acknowledged, especially you, with your own process. Because if you're not acknowledging that, you're missing the clues. You're missing the clues, because there's something in your painting that is driving you on, right? Otherwise, you just go, oh, I'm done, this is doing nothing for me, and move on to the next thing, or not, <laughs> don't even go back to painting, you might not be inspired at all to do it. But you're all turning up every week and you're all painting pictures, so the message I'm getting is you want to do this, this is feeding you in some way. So look at your painting and ask it, what clues are you giving me here? What is it about your painting that you like? Are you successful at all? With those two approaches, are you successful at just opening up and letting it come in? Or are you successful at, tra at translating your original vision? Is it, is it working for you? That's, only you can say that. Only you can answer that question. So go, go back to your original intent when you decided to take this course. What, what was it that you, that drove you to say, I'd like to learn how to paint with oils? Or I'd like to learn how to paint, period. What, what was it that took you there? And then those who um, had, a, had a, a particular uh, image that they wanted to translate, a, a, 
a, an initial vision of what they wanted to express, ask yourself, am I on track? Is it working? Does it, am I liking this painting? Is it actually beginning to speak of that original intention and vision that I had? Or am I just off track? And you'll be able to tell, am I, if I'm off track, then it really doesn't do anything for you. You're looking at it and you're going, okay, this is not firing me up at all. It's not inspiring me. The process isn't inspiring me. Now, I would venture to guess that everybody that's painting here has some really positive clues on their canvas. And I would encourage you to look, stop and take a good look at your painting. Look at it from different perspectives. Get up, go a long ways away, look at it, get up real close. And just, just ask yourself, what part of this painting do I really like? What is working for me? What, what do I, what really... Um, what really works in, in, in tandem with my original idea of what I wanted? What connects me to that? What clue? What positive clue do you have? You're looking for a path through the woods and you're looking for those little trails. So that, I think, will help you if the original answer to the question was, no, I really don't like my painting. Um, or it's really, you know, I sort of like it, but I can't, you know, I can't seem to get it. So just look for those clues. Um, sometimes for me, I'll look at my painting and I'll go, oh, I really like that part. Why? What, what is it about that part that works better than that part? Well, maybe it's just, maybe it's the colors I used, or maybe it's the contrast that I brought out, or, or maybe it's just the shapes are pleasing to me. But allow that uh, one little, you know, that little message, or it might be a bunch of parts that you really like and there's only a few parts you don't like. But just, just trust that feeling of, I like it, or I don't like it. Trust that feeling, because that will tell you what you can leave alone. I like it, don't wreck it. And what you can work on. I don't like this, I need to change it. And that's a constant little feedback that you go into when you're creating art. That you really have to listen to that, that feeling of, is it feeding me, is it making me feel good, or is it just turning me off? And those are, that's good information. Both are very good information. So, I don't know about you, but when I go into painting, I want to end up with something I really like. If I don't really like it, it's probably just going to end up sitting in the basement with its face to the wall and get reprimed and become a different painting. But what I really would like is I want, I want that painting to be successful in my, in my judgment. I, I really want it to communicate something to everybody that looks at it. So that's what I aim for. And if it's not doing that, uh, I go, oh, here's an opportunity to learn something. What is it that I'm not doing that, that you know, I, could, I need to change? So are you getting that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So look at your painting. Don't, uh, don't put a lot of constraints on it. Just look at your painting and ask yourself, what part do I like and what part isn't working for me? And you might be one of those people that look at it and go, I love it all. I really like it. It's working. Well, if that's the case, you may be almost done or you might be done. You know, there's always these little tweaks you got to do until finally you get to that moment where you go, okay, don't spoil it. It's done. It's beautiful. It works. I love it. 
and then when you get to that, you know, when you get to that point, then it's time to look for another canvas and start a new one. And some of you have done that. You've you've gotten to a point where you re really like it. You think it's ready. It's ready to dry, and you're going to go off to a, to another one. And that's awesome. Um, and some of you are still in that early stage, I think, of, well, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, of feeling some kind of affection for your painting. Maybe you're still struggling with, geez, it's just not doing it for me. So go back to the original intent that you had when you first decided to paint this thing. And ask yourself, what part of it do I like? What part of it is not working for me? If none of it is working for me, maybe I need to start over. Or maybe I need to just go back in to that original idea that turned me on in the first place. What was it that actually turned you on to make that painting in the first place? How close are you to that place? Recognizing when you're done is as important as getting that initial intention clear. It's, it's about really sinking in to how it feels to you. And then you get this clarity of vision. That's, that's what tells you. It's, it's almost a gut level you know, energy like, yes, like when something tastes good. It's like that. And if it just doesn't taste good, well, push it off and find, find something that does. And it might mean erasing, it might mean starting over. The neat thing about oils is that it's opaque enough that you can actually layer it once you let it dry. and you can work with tweaking the stuff that isn't working for you by covering up or adding to. It's, it's a very tweakable medium. Some aren't, some are much more difficult to do that. So we're lucky that way. Um, don't do that, it will stay, it will stay gummy, tacky, for probably twice as long. But it's a beautiful, rich oil, and I suggest uh, that you try it. We're getting low on the day one. Um, so, if anybody has any questions about where to go with their, with their painting, um, I, I'm open to that giving you my opinion, which is just my opinion, but I guess that's why you're here, is you want my opinion, so. Ooh. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't put it in the middle. You know, I took two pictures because I really wanted that add-on on the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. And this was a perspective I liked, but yes. it didn't really have a good rendition of the shed, so I added the shed on the house. Well, I kind of got detached from what I was actually painting. And it, 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 the, this level of the wall is the same as that level of the shed, but I ignored them in that Because it's right on the edge, and I mean, I cut myself some stock. Yeah, I can see why I ignored them. But anyway, I realized it was yeah. it was not right, yeah. no. and it was just a matter of, of running um, that uh, surface, you know, catching the light from that side, and it yeah. makes it pop out. Yeah. It's still in the background, but it's yeah. 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 yeah, I think when they get down the details, we actually forget that.